we love to grow uh, business leaders and businesses. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. I'm your host, Todd Westra, and I am so excited today because we're going to be talking about three of my favorite things to talk about in Growth and Scaling. People, processes, and tools. There are so many of you out there trying to grow and scale your businesses and you're having a hard time because, first of all, the people problem. It's challenging to know how to control and manage and hire and build the right teams with the right people. It just is. I don't care who you are. Almost every business founder runs into this problem. And then the processes. Oh my gosh. I mean, they are a pain in the butt sometimes put together. How are you going to make this business run differently than the other one that you ran or the other group that you used to work for? How do you make it yours? How do you make it unique? And how do you get buy-in from your team? And then the tools. Yes, the tech, the, the pieces of equipment that you use, the things that you need to grow your business. These are all three big problems that I have heard over and over and over again from guests on this podcast, as well as people that I just work with on a day-to-day basis. And let me tell you something. Today's guest is going to be talking to us about these three things, how he's so good at doing them, why he's so good at, at managing them, and how he can help you and your business create better practices for working with your people, ways to unify them, way to build better processes and use better tools to get them all to work together to help grow and build your business. Today's guest is awesome. You're going to love this interview. I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait to see you at the end of this thing to hear your thoughts on it. Share it with someone you know who's struggling with their people processes and tools. And you're going to love this episode. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. We have got today an amazing episode with a man who is in a like-minded industry that I've been in for a long time. Love people that think this way. They are the kind of guys who are going to teach you how to systematically, operationally run your business remotely and do it for you. Nick Thompson, come on in. Tell us who you are and who do you like to help with your business? Awesome. Thanks very much. Uh, Yeah, over the years, I have started, scaled, and exited a number of companies. So serial entrepreneur, for sure. Uh, Some of those exits successful and some not so successful. So lots of (laughs) lessons learned along the way. Uh, Do own a company now, Vea Office Professionals. It's virtual executive system and bookkeeping services across North America. Um, Also uh, authored a book uh, published last year on the 13 biggest pitfalls of business and how to avoid them. Love it. Based on experiencing them. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's now a best. <laughs> Only 13? Yeah, exactly. Hey, if I were to catalog mine, there'd be a lot oh, more than There's going to probably be some, uh, some new books coming out in that regard. <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's been great. That's a best-selling book on Amazon now. Um, who, love it. who do I like to help? We, uh, we love to grow uh, business leaders and businesses. So entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. And that's one of the reasons why you reached out, Todd, and I said, absolutely. I love what you're doing here. I would love to contribute because uh, we're definitely like-minded, as you said. So appreciate being love here. It. I love it. I love it. You know, honestly, uh, it, it's a fascinating industry that you're in. And and when I when I meet other people who are in the business of helping other businesses, um, in particular in growth and scaling phases, if they haven't done it, I immediately count them out. But you have had experience in growth and scaling yourself. Tell us a little bit about your journey. I mean, how have you gotten to the point now where you feel comfortable coming in and saying, hey, look, I have got some key positions and roles we can fill for you that you're not able to do yourself right now. I, well, tell us about your journey. Uh, I, we're having, what got you here? Okay. Well, you know, we've only got a short period of time together. It's a long <laughs> journey. But, uh, you know, over the years, um, I'm a big advocate of learning from all the great thought leaders of our time, the Jim Collins, the Simon Sinek's, you know, uh, right. Josh Godin, those, those types. So I'm a huge uh, advocate of learning. Um, and uh, um, I was telling you earlier, I got involved in an organization called Entrepreneurs Organization. It's worldwide. It's for right. entrepreneurs. 
and uh, I've been a member there for this is my 23rd year. And so wow. all of the different companies that we've incubated over the years have really been spawned from ideas and discussions and, and networks from entrepreneurs organizations. So that's really helped right. us scale up. Um, and in fact, the idea for our virtual EA and bookkeeping company came from a fellow EO member who said, hey, I have a virtual executive assistant and here's how it right. works and it's fantastic. And we said, hey, there is a market for that. That was back in 2016. Yes. And obviously um, when the COVID pandemic hit, uh, the market grew for that. Uh, and so now we get a lot, yeah, it exploded. And, and so now we get a lot of call for this, this would be a great way to scale up and uh, up and out uh, different I businesses. Yeah, yeah. And and how who are you seeing as your best client? I mean, are they are they the people that are are solopreneuring small business startups, or are they the guys that that have a big organization and they need more help for their their team leads, things like that? Like, what are you seeing as your perfect client? Yeah, that's a great question, Todd. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's actually in between those two. So the startups, okay. it's a little more difficult because they haven't gone through some of that experience generation right. yet, right? Um, right? And then the large, large companies, um, we do absolutely some some work with, you know, billion dollar plus revenue companies. But our, right. our, our niche market is entrepreneurs that have you know have had a running they're starting to get some success and they're looking to ramp up their business and they need resources to scale right so that's our that's definitely where we fit in the best okay i like that that's a good fit um how, how are you seeing you know as you've you've done this yourself and now you're helping other businesses in this growth and scaling journey what would you say, like looking at the whole operational side of this thing is your favorite part? Like, where do you feel like, dude, I just love that rush of helping people in this particular phase. Right. What, what is it? Yeah. So, um, first of all, I'm a big, I'm a big people person. So I've always believed, you know, if you want to grow your business, you got to grow your people. Simple yeah. as that. And so I'm very big on culture development, um, you know, uh, psychological safety, uh, growing yeah. people so that they can be accountable to their own positions and they can own their own uh, role. Right. Um, so right. that's that's definitely a passion of mine when it comes to when it comes to that. We like to integrate those types of people into organizations that understand that very value of growing people. And when sure. we get great, great joy, when we start to see them scaling the way they want to scale in, in right. whatever that looks like for success for them. And we, we're, we're a part of that for them. Right. And, and we like to help with that. So we get great satisfaction in watching, um, all the people that we're connected to scaling yeah. to whatever they, you know, are dreaming of. Right. I love it. I love it. No, that's, that's so, that's so powerful. And, and I guess one of the things that I love to hear from you, especially is like, where do you see the biggest breakdown is, you know, it's one thing to be that startup guy. And it's another thing to, to now have a team of employees and, and people that you're trying to help nurture and be specialized. In. Where are you seeing the big, the big drop off there? Yeah. And one thing I see over and over again, and I do, um, executive team coaching as well for an organization, awesome. usually mid to larger companies that I work with. Right. Um, but right. what I continue to see, and it doesn't matter what size of company, uh, it's just, you know, bigger company, bigger problems. Right. So yeah. what, yeah. what I see though, is resource management is the biggest issue to scaling. And when I say resources, I mean, you know, money, it take, it costs money to build a business, right? And so yeah. if you don't have yeah. a tight uh, understanding of your money position and where it's going, yeah. money resources can, can become a real issue. People obviously issue. where everyone I know is I want to, where can I find good people? Right. Yeah. Uh, so people yeah. resources and then tools to run your business and obviously technology. <laughs> Right. Right. So uh, those are kind of the four areas of resources that I find if we don't have a real good understanding of where we are and what we yeah. need, that's where things can fall off the off the tracks. Hey there, friends. This is Todd. Running a business honestly can leave a lot of founders and operators feeling lonely and isolated. If you have ever felt that way, 
Trust me, I know what it feels like. And there is something you can do about it. You've heard a lot of our guests talk about the fact that being lonely and isolated is one of their biggest challenges in trying to run and scale their business. CaptainsCouncil.com. Go to CaptainsCouncil.com right now and see what we're doing to resolve this problem. We want you to be a strong operator who has solutions and has a way to get around the challenges you're currently facing. What most founders don't understand is that you're not alone. The challenges that you're facing, likely somebody else has already overcome and they can give you the feedback you need to overcome them. Who better than your peers, other founders, other operators who are joining with you in a small group setting, a global community setting, as well as at our in-person events to guide you through these challenges that you're facing right now. Don't give up, keep on pushing, but do it with some good advice from your peers. Go check it out at captainscouncil.com and let me know what you think about the offering. We can't wait to see you there. I love it. You know, you 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 have literally just quoted uh, as I as I ran this podcast in early 2020. Um, I I started almost just predicting almost every time what people are going to say are they the biggest challenges of their growth yeah. journey. And almost every CEO founder says first people processes and then tools there you go. and you know, your resources and process, very similar agenda here, but, but, you know, for those listening who are in a growth journey, this isn't being repeated out of a, a, a predetermined cue that I've given people. It's, it's a common problem. <laughs> Most people have problems with people, processes and tools. So how do you as a, as a virtual assistant provider solve that problem? Awesome. Uh, yeah, I know. I love to hear those, those patterns. Cause when you start yeah. to hear a pattern from different <laughs> unrelated resources, totally pay attention, right? Pay totally. Attention. totally. So, so you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, when it comes to people, uh, really important about setting up a culture of self-management, self-accountability. So instead of telling people what to do, Tell them what the result is that you want and let them do yeah. their job. That is a huge thing. We, when we manage people, we are ultimately accountable for everything they do. So instead, right. we want to lead right. people by giving them all the tools and resources they need to do the best that they can and then coach yeah. them, right? Be there to support yeah. them. Yeah. That is a big shift uh, that's, that's happened throughout the last sort of 20 years. Uh, from Agreed. from managing to leading, from telling to coaching, right? So, and I and I yep. hear that pattern all the time. So that's one thing for the people side of things, for the yeah. for the money side of things. And I see this with all sizes of companies: budgeting and reporting. Understand yeah. how to budget, know the numbers, and run your business to a budget. Get monthly reporting. Forget quarterly. Forget that quarterly is a public company thing. Agreed. Definitely forget Agreed. yearly. Get that monthly budgeting and reporting. And so you can make sure that your money is always there so you can you can use it to pay for the valuable resources you need to scale, right? I, I, I totally agree with that. I would almost jump in there and say, also a mid-month check-in is critical. Beautiful. You know, knowing your budget numbers and, and trying to execute to the budget but checking mid month and knowing where you should be yes. at that point in the month exactly. is a good thing. Our, yeah. our management team meets every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock for half an hour yep. to review the numbers and any issues we're Love having it. and, and we move on. Right. So every week we're Love checking it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I would give you one more tool it. and that is, um, um, processes and procedures. Uh, very yep. often it's stuck up in, in either the founder's head. Or, yes. or they've transferred it to some form of management, get it all written down, get it to, you know, I actually 100%. just had a meeting this morning with our controller who's, who's training the bookkeeper on reorganizing some of our books. They're doing classes. And I said, can you please record it while you're talking about it? Cause we'll put that into our SOP file, right? Standard operating For procedures. Sure. And then yeah. we, we don't have to ask questions. We just go view the video, right? I just make it. sure it's all in writing and that will help as you scale. You're not reinventing the wheel and retraining people when they should know what, how to do things. Oh, right. I love, love, love what you're saying. I mean, for those listening again, 
growth and scaling does not happen without systems in place. Like if you are not checking things, if you don't know what to look for, you don't know how to grow. And it's just, you beat your head against a wall so you identify, I should be watching this, this, and this. And then once you finally recognize that you've got to be watching those things, it all of a sudden, things start to work and you can now take what you were doing here and multiply that. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Yeah. Oh, love it. So so as you as you help other companies, you know, again, th this is a bit of a reflective point. I think for a lot of people listening, it's one thing to grow your own business and work on these systems, these processes and how you work with your people, culture, all those things that you've been talking about. How do you, when you see other companies struggling with these things, how do you let them know without offending them? I mean, a lot of them feel like, hey, my business is going great. We, you know what? We're doing 5 million, 10 million, 100 million a year, and we're doing great. When you see these obvious things happening, how do you help them see things could be better? Right. Yeah. So, so the first thing we do, and it's, and it's a, you know, it's a, a coaching technique, is just ask questions, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. where, where do you, this looks amazing. Where do you want to go? Right. Where yeah. do you see yourself? Where do you see things going? And where are, where do you feel like your biggest, you know, choke points are? Where, where are you stuck? For sure. You know, where are those, those things that uh, you feel are holding you back from getting there? And that's a great place to start. And, and yeah. when they uh, start to explain that and say, I need some help in certain areas, then we can say, okay, well, here's a resource or here's an example of another company that went through this or one yeah. of my own companies that went through this and either here's yeah. what we failed to do or here's how we overcame it, right? And Love just it. share some stories so that we get uh, that real, because it's not about shooting people, right? Like you should do right. this or should do that because that's when right. advice becomes just advice. It's, it's yes. about sharing experiences and real life stories that we can learn from. So those typically resonate better with people. I love yeah. it. I love it. Now, as you, as you have, um, oh, I'm going a little bit off cue here just because I feel like this conversation is so, is so helpful for people to hear. Um, I, t tell me where you feel like as you, as you have seen the evolution of, of, through COVID, as you mentioned earlier, you see this evolution of people finding resources out of their immediate office space yeah. and, and, and outsourcing either to a remote company or having employees remotely. What do you see as the biggest fails there and, and how do you help solve that? Absolutely. And it's a great question. Very relevant for, for these days, isn't right. it? Um, so right. so there's, there's a lot of fear by employers about uh, remote work, uh, or, or some of them are looking at a mix, right? Uh, like half in yeah. office half. Um, and obviously we're only talking about, um, like office type jobs. I mean, when you're talking about trades, we can't really do trades work remotely. We need people with right, hands on. Right. So, so super important, you know, health, you know, all the, uh, For sure. all the vital, uh, services that we have. Um, but when we're talking about office work, the, some of the greatest fears are um, will, you know, how much are they working right at home? Uh, how much are they doing? Uh, are we getting the right productivity out of people, uh, etc. Right. And and some of the some of the recommendations are, you know, our, our meeting rhythm that we normally would have in the office on check ins and, right. uh, you know, stuck points and that sort of thing. We have to increase that meeting rhythm when people are right. working remotely. So the communication has to go up because there's no flybys, water cooler talk, you know, uh, you know, fly by somebody's office and say, you got a second. Totally. So, so we just have to increase those meeting rhythms and set, yeah. set a rhythm so that you're meeting and it might be a quick daily check-in in five, 10 minutes. Sure. It might be, sure. you know, two to three times a week, whatever it is, just make sure yeah. that there is a structured meeting rhythm and and increase right. that meeting rhythm with people working virtually so every because it's good for everyone the people working it virtually sometimes yeah they sometimes feel a little bit isolated so to have that is good for both sides of the of the equation the other thing is making sure there's clear clear results and metrics for each role so that they're being measured and I everyone can see 
how uh, how much we're progressing towards totally. uh, getting things done, success, etc. Right. So we got to be really clear. That's a best practice anyway, Todd. It's just that we 100%. have to be really hone in on those when we're doing virtual because we can't just walk yeah. by somebody and say, "Oh, I forgot to ask you something." Right. What are you doing? Yeah, or you walk right? by and seeing the computer screen right? going, what are they working on right now? Or, oh, <laughs> hey, I saw, oh, I, um, I, 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 I just saw you. Did you happen to call, you know, Fred from so-and-so place, right? right? Uh, right. We don't have that luxury anymore. Now we no. have to structure it a bit more, right? It is. And, you know, I think that you bring up a point that I think is so vital in growth and scaling, and, and that is, at launch point, most businesses are okay having a team of generalists, you know, someone that can kind of wear a lot of hats and, and help you accomplish the get off the ground phase of your business. Once you get into growth and scaling phase, if you don't have specialists with very, very clear definitions of what you expect them to be doing, they don't do much. <laughs> you may have the best hire in the world, but if they don't know exactly what you're expecting from them, they don't perform as the best person in the world because they don't know what you want from them. So so how do you yeah. recommend to people getting clear on that? How, how do they, do they write it down? Do they make videos? What do you, what have you seen to be most effective in that? Great, uh, an excellent point. Uh, one, I heard this a long time ago and I just always seem to, uh, I, I like to think of things visually a little bit. Um, um, I was talking with an associate and they said, listen, um, think of it as think of each person's role as a highway, right? Um, freeway where you are, uh, sure. and and you're driving down the freeway, and you you show them this is the border on this side, this is the border on this side. Your goal yeah. is to get to this location with these yeah. metrics. How you drive the car is up to you. How fast you drive is up to you, right? right? Fast, slow, right. change lanes, you know, safety, look out for that truck, right? And, but you just define the, the actual borders of where it gets dangerous, right? Or outside like of their scope. So yeah. um, in order to do that, uh, we recommend, uh, you know, job description, right? I do. I answer sure. the phones. I talk to people when they come in the door, whatever. Sure. Uh, we recommend what's called what we call a performance description. And a performance description says, here's the task. Here's here's how I do the task. And here's how yeah. I measure if I do it really well. Yeah. And we do that for each task. And uh, we it. like to get each individual to do their own. That way they own their own performance description. Interesting. So that's something that really and works well. That That is an interesting thing. So so you, you essentially outline the objectives you want them to accomplish and then have them outline how they're going to get it done. You got it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then Love they it. own it. And we say improve upon it, right? It's yours. You yeah. own it. Negotiate with other people whatever you need to do and keep updating it. And it's a public document so we can all see each other's performance. Love it. Yeah. Wow. 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 I like that. Now, now listen, Nick, this is, this conversation is amazing. Um, I think that anyone listening is going to find value in this. T tell me about, as you've been part of these other organizations, you've mentioned EO, you've mentioned, you know, you, you do some consulting work. How do you, is there someone in your circle that you have looked at and just said, you know what, these guys, this team inspires me, this person inspires me to be a better founder, to be a better manager, whatever it is. Who is that in your circle that you'd like to give a shout out to today? Yeah, well, I would definitely like to give a shout out to my dad. My dad and I, awesome. uh, we uh, first started uh, my very first company together. It was a marketing company. Um, cool. And we started it together, and he was definitely a mentor through the years. Um, he's not going to be able to hear this podcast. He's, uh, he's in a home. He's got last stage dementia. But he is uh, one of my greatest heroes, always has been uh, since growing up, and taught me a lot about you know ethics uh, ethics in business uh, taught me all Love about it. people and and how to treat people properly and uh, so he he would definitely be my first shout out uh, in Love terms it. of of business and um, um, I had an, another mentor actually happened to be 
a friend of my dad's. His name is Dale Hodgson. He is, okay. uh, he was uh, in y, uh, YPO, Young President's Organization. Yeah. Um, yep. Still is. And he's in his 80s. Uh, so he's still an <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, and wow. he mentored me through uh, buying, uh, uh, buying a corporate building for my business and how to structure that. Cool. Selling my first business, how to structure that. Uh, and cool. mentored me through all these huge, the biggest transactions of my life during those, those, those 20 years. Um, so huge shout out to Dale. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, and, and he knows awesome this one. because I've told him to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's so awesome. I mean, it's, it's one thing to, to, to be appreciated privately. Another thing to be, to be recognized uh, publicly. I, I think that these shout outs to me mean a lot. I love hearing the dad ones. Uh, my dad's also an inspiration, but but Nick, I appreciate you and your dad. I appreciate this this also, this family friend who's been able to mentor you. It is so hard to grow and scale without good mentors. And and it, I I can't voice it loudly enough. Find some mentors and be specific who you would like to have as a mentor and go after them because they don't know that people want to learn from them. I, I, I'm quite certain, Nick, that in your 23 years being involved in EO and in YPO, you have likely been a mentor to other people as well. Everyone wants to give back in this community of founders. And, and I feel like if you don't find someone that wants to help you, it won't take a lot of searching to find someone that will. So be humble, be willing to ask for that help. And when you get it, just grasp onto it and and run with it because these people love to see you grow nick you are are an amazing uh founder to have on today because i can tell already that you've been in that role as a mentor and uh and thank you for all that you do for our community of people trying to grow and scale todd thank you for putting this podcast together for this massive community to help them. I, that's why I'm so excited to be a part of it. What you're doing, I think, is absolutely fantastic and honorable. And so thank, thank you, you for, for letting me be a part thank of you. it. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. And for those listening, we look forward to having you follow up with, with Nick. He's a, he's available online. We'll put all of his links in the, in the show notes below. Don't hesitate to follow him. Reach out to him if you've got questions. And, uh, and let's move forward. And we hope you have a good, successful week listening to the Growth and Scaling podcast. Thanks for being here today, Nick. Thank you. Hey, what did you think of that? Yeah, I know. He does a business similar to what I used to do, which is virtual assistant, outsourcing, other team, virtual team members, building those remote teams and getting them to work for your business in a way that you've maybe never thought of doing, or maybe you have, but have been ineffective at doing it. He does it really well. I'm telling you right now, if you're trying to grow and scale your business, you have to listen to the advice that he gave. Such good advice. Go back and re-listen to this again and again, because there are nuggets in there that he and I both discussed that are going to help you to grow and scale your business because you can't do it all by yourself. You can't. You just can't. So when you put the right people in the right places, the right processes in the right places, teach these people how to use the resources that your business has, you then align everyone with the right vision and you have got a growth generation machine, okay? Your business needs to operate without you. The founder can only run so many things at any given time. So hand off these things to the people that can help you. You'll find so much more joy knowing that someone else is handling the problems that you're not good at or you just don't have time to run so that you can focus on the things that make you a better business owner, founder. I hope this helps. Share this episode with anyone you can who needs it. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you need to do, but get the word out that this podcast, the Growth and Scaling Podcast is the place to help you learn the tools and resources you need to grow and scale your business. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you on the next episode.